Hey everyone, so I just wanted to talk about how I actually got diagnosed with lymphoma and how my lymphoma apparently was originally seen as more of a stage 2 but it got labelled as a stage 4E um, to kind of be safe. So I just kind of want to talk about those things. So I was in the Netherlands for 6 months from uh, the very end of December to June, July. July I think I came back um, at the very beginning. And I was in the Netherlands because my boyfriend is Dutch and we've been doing a long distance relationship for five years. And so we finally, I finally finished my Bachelor of Psychology and I was like, yay, we can finally live together. And we can start the process to get a partner visa in Australia, which you need to be together for a year de facto living together before you can apply. And since my family's Spanish and I have a Spanish um, passport and citizenship, I can live in Europe for as long as I want and work and do everything. So I went over there for six months and I was living with his family, and it was a great time. Um, but I was itchy. Just before I left, I started getting an overall body itch, and it was particularly on my legs. Um, and I would just always use coconut oil to kind of keep them hydrated, because I thought maybe it was because my skin was really dry. But no matter how much moisturizer I use, it didn't really seem to help that much. And coconut oil is a pretty strong moisturizer um, and oil on your legs. So that didn't quite work and when I was in the Netherlands it kind of just got worse and about two weeks in my feet got really itchy at night. So I'd wake up in the middle of the night, my feet would just be itchy really bad um, and it would just wake me up and I wouldn't be able to sleep and then I'd, you know, maybe an hour I'd be there in um, distress and then I'd fall asleep again. So I pretty much had six months of distressing like sleep, um, sleep my sleep was disturbed because of my distressing itchy foot problem. So I had for six months uh, really bad itchy feet and I eventually learned how to manage it which was wrapping ice packs around my feet every night so that way the ice would hopefully last six hours and I would get my sleep um, and I think maybe at night maybe my temperature rose and that's why my feet got particularly itchy because it was the heat because the cold did help my feet a lot and that was the main like the main way that I was able to manage it um, but I had this itchy foot problem and so then eventually about three months in I was like I can't take it anymore not something's not right I tried all the fungal things in case it was like a fungal um, foot problem I just tried allergy base things that didn't help and I eventually went to the dermatologist and by that point my foot was quite bad like I had eczema kind of thing coming up because of the red skin because I'd been scratching so much and it was something that I could not control and so they helped heal my skin they wrapped it up I wasn't allowed to touch it um, and they also put some cooling stuff on it and the skin healed but the itchy like strong steroid creams that they gave me didn't help at all for the itch and so then they couldn't really help me but they did a blood test and when they did the blood test to see if there was something behind the itch, they found that something was really high, like my inflammation was really high in my blood. And they were like, that's very strange. And something's not quite with, something about some bone marker wasn't quite right, and my platelets or something. Um, but things weren't right, and particularly inflammation. So then I went to some other doctor, and they did maybe like three different blood tests, this urine test, this, that. And the very last blood test he asked for again, he's like, we're doing another blood test. Something is not right here because you seem totally healthy. I had no lumps, no, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but I had been getting sick, like I'd had a cold or a flu, like consistently over time. But that could have easily been because of the cold over there. Um, so I got another blood test with a urine test and an x-ray and an ultrasound. And with those tests, which was at, in July, because it had been such a long process to find what was quite, you know, what was wrong with my itching. Because within dermatology, it was kind of like this whole thing of, oh, well, maybe your body's just different. Um, maybe because of the climate, you know, sometimes we have some um, Asian clients who come in and it's to, when they go back to China and stuff, it's all fine. Maybe it's to do with stress. Um, because, you know, there was stress in being over there and not being able to, you know, live in your own house. You're living with the parents' house and obviously there's going to be stress related to that. Um, and I didn't have a car, whereas here I have a car. So there were certain independence things I had to give up. But I wouldn't think that it would be so strong to cause this reaction in my feet. It just seemed just too much. And so then when I did the test with the inflammation um, and the x-ray, it was in the x-ray that they found this really strange thing in my 
like in my lungs and they rang me straight away and they said we have you have to meet with a lung person and so then when I went to see the lung specialist uh, she asked for a CT scan and a bronchoscopy um, which the bronchoscopy was particularly traumatic I don't think I'll ever do that again conscious I will go to sleep if I have another one and I often tell myself you know this isn't gonna be so bad at least not the bronchoscopy like that really was particularly traumatic maybe I'll make a video about how traumatic that was um, but now I also did a CT scan and in that CT scan she saw that it was my lymph nodes were inflamed uh, I mean enlarged and there was something growing from one in particular down and near around my lung but it wasn't in my lung my lung tissue was totally fine nothing was wrong with that but it was coming from my lymph nodes and that was when they said she said I believe that you have lymphoma I'm not sure what kind but it's most likely Hodgkin's lymphoma um, and they wanted to do a biopsy in the Netherlands, but we decided to come back because she said that there was a slight chance that, you know, they could potentially do some, I don't know if like a puncture in the lung or something like that. And I would be unfit to fly. And I had my mum there at the time. She came just at the very end. She was actually there when the doctor told me it was most likely cancer um, because we were meant to go to Spain with, on a holiday with my um, partner and his family, his parents and my mother. So unfortunately we didn't go on the holiday, but I'm glad that my mum was there with my partner when she told me that news, because obviously that was upsetting. And then we came back to Australia and did all the extra tests, the PET scan, the biopsy, and that's when we found for sure it was Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that's how I was diagnosed. Uh, and when I met with my haematologist, she was saying um, that it was most likely a stage two. She was saying that it was most likely a stage one, stage two. It doesn't look like it's spread. She said I was at a good stage um, and that it's very treatable, that I should be fine. Even though it's gonna be a really hard couple of months, I should be fine. Um, and so then when I met with the hematologist, she was also saying that, you know, I have a very good IPS score, I believe it is, of a zero. Um, I believe it's from zero to seven and that's kind of like different factors that are in your favor or against you um, and I had an IPS score of zero and if that was gonna what it was gonna be if I had a stage two but then they had this big meeting apparently with lots of different hematologists oncologists pet specialists blah 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 and they looked at the pet scan and there was like a little light at the bottom of like kind of my lung area but they didn't know if it was connected to the same lymph node it could be a different one all they knew is that they had to be cautious and they decided to call it a stage four and when I heard that they called it a stage four like I decided to freak out a bit I was just like stage four I know that's really bad um, generally speaking cancer stage four is bad but she was saying that within the lymphomas it isn't necessarily that bad and in my case in particular I shouldn't be too worried about it it might mean that instead of six months of chemo I have eight months of chemo but they really do expect that I should just have the six cycles um, and so that you know helped me a bit not to feel so distressed and she was also saying that within at least the blood disorders or the um, blood cancers like lymphoma um, a stage four isn't normally as distressing compared to something like a stage four prostate cancer or breast cancer or something and in my case it wasn't like it had moved to like my bone marrow or up um, and below my diaphragm it was kind of all in the same area but it was a different kind of light a different little spot that was kind of growing there and they didn't know if it was connected and it was very small because my tumor is a particularly big bulky mass and it's kind of all connected but this other light that was kind of there started to shine so yeah so it was a bit distressing to hear that I kind of am labeled cautiously a stage four but I'm glad that hearing from her that it seems um, that I'm still in a very favorable position technically my IPS score is now a one instead of a zero because as soon as it goes to stage four apparently that means that it gets a one um, but I still have very favorable um, score which is a good thing and I'm glad that out of all the cancers I have a good cancer um, and that I have favorable factors. So that's my story about how I got diagnosed, my symptoms um, of my cancer. I know a lot of people often talk about lumps, but I had no lumps. I could not feel, they could not feel any kind of lump. 
um, in my skin, which is why I found it so surprising. And also my other side effect, uh, I mean my other symptom was really like a cough. I had a persistent cough that just would not go away and a slight shortness of breath and that is because my tumor is pushing on my lung and when they did the bronchoscopy they could see that my lung was you know being pushed from a side um, so it's really just a bit of shortness of breath a persistent little cough and itching and they were the two things that apparently you know underlying that I had lymphoma cancer and I just would never have thought that as obviously as a 22 year old who's otherwise healthy um, but you know these things happen and I'm in a much better position than many and there are much worse things to get at least that's how I view it so please share your story down below about how you got diagnosed or how you found out that you had your type of cancer and also feel free to talk about the staging experience did you have something like me where they had you know something that seemed very small and then all of a sudden it jumped to stage four um, and just seemed a bit crazy uh, but I hope everyone is doing well and is healthy and I'll see you in the next video